Ham uh, in the London derby. Um, again, it, this is, I mean, Frank Lampard really needs a win in this one. Two defeats back to back now for them, which I don't think many people were expecting. And it shows just how quickly that table can change. Yeah, well, in the first, was well, in the top eight, will we see the best coverage? How do Chelsea get him into that system where he's going to dominate games like he did in Germany? I mean, to be fair to him, I think he expected to, to be having a hard time. I think he was quite aware that it's going to be, you know, taking time to adjust to a new league, a new club, a new language, and a new system. And Chelsea aren't really a possession side. I think they're best when they can be quite quick and direct through the wings or go early with, with um, Timo Werner making a run or with uh, maybe Tammy Abrams holding up the ball. And there's not really a natural space for a number 10 in no. this team right now. So the question is, you know, Hugh will have to change. Will Harvard have to adjust his game to fit into Chelsea? Or will it become so influential, even when he is out of position, if you will, that Chelsea have to change for him? If he, if he had to change, how would he change? Where would he go? Because has he got enough pace to play out wide? Will he score enough goals as a centre forward? Is he good enough for the ball to play as a six? Why would he change? I think he can do all these, really? all these jobs, but I wouldn't necessarily play him as a false nine up against you know, two huge centre-backs. Mm. That's, that's yeah. not going to be his game, I think, when he has to suddenly hold up the ball. So maybe that's not the ideal position for him. I think as a number eight, he's already shown he can do it. Yeah. Um, number six, maybe eventually, but I think eight is better for him. Yeah. Mm. And he can play wide. He's never going to be a wide player in the, in the, in the winger mould, mm. but he can be a wide player like Coutinho was a wide player for Liverpool, yeah. starting on the left, moving inside. That's why when Lampard says, I think he can play on the right, I would agree with him because he has played there before and he is intelligent enough to make it happen. But I think it goes back to something else. Chelsea need to just treat the ball a bit better. Havertz wants to have a lot of the ball. Mm. If he becomes isolated as, as part of the front three and there's just kind of long balls or, or you know, Chelsea don't really dominate, dominate the game, then he looks really exposed. It's not his game. So again, I think there's sort of a, kind of a bigger issue that Lampard needs to solve and then we'll see the best out of him as well. Is finding the best position for Timo Werner still an issue for Frank Lampard as well? Because he's, he's failed to convince in the last few weeks and his versatility of being able to play both on the left, right or down the middle has been one of the positives we've spoken about Timo Werner this season. But would he not prefer to just know where he's going to play and stick to that? You know, the interesting thing is that he doesn't. Okay. Um, he said, part of the reason that attracted me to Chelsea is that Lampard said to me, I don't have a fixed position for you. I will play you in different positions depending on what we need that day against the opposition. And he says he enjoys that. Mm. So that, that was quite interesting. I don't think the position is the problem. The problem is I think he just looks a little bit like a player who's played kind of non-stop mm. since, uh, since July when he came over to, to start training with them. And he just looks a little bit spent. He just looks a little bit tired at the moment. Mm. I don't think that there's anything tactically wrong as such. Um, I think he's, he could do with the breather and just recharge the batteries. I think that's all it is. Yeah. All right, what about West Ham? What a season they're having. Really surprising everyone with the start they've had, considering they were fighting to stay in the league at the end of last season. Who's yeah. impressed you from the West Ham side, aside from Mikel Antonio, who, of course, is still struggling yeah. with injury? Um, the one that catches my eyes is, is Suchek. Yeah. Um, I think he's... He's, you know, I don't mean to disrespect, but he's not you know, the most beautiful footballer to watch in terms of the way he plays, but he's so effective. Um, he's great in both boxes. Um, he doesn't look the most athletic, but he doesn't stop. Yeah. And whenever there's a cross uh, in attacking sense, he's always there or thereabouts. Um, and I just think that's great to see. He plays with enthusiasm. Um, and I just think the team, work, if he's playing well, the team play well. And Jarrod Boyd as well, out mm. wide. I think he's mm. had a real good son. Ale, what a goal. The that old was Reg brilliant. Hit. Mm. Come on, Raf. What a goal. <laughs> Fantastic goal, but I mean, Sebastian Halle hasn't had the best of times, I think, in, uh, in the no. Premier League. And uh, difficult to understand why a player who was. And I think right now it's a little bit easier for him because the way he plays, I think it's easy for supporters to get on his back because mm -hmm. he doesn't always look very involved. And it, it really enrages them yeah, if a really. centre forward doesn't look as if he's sort of putting himself so about. How'd you get the, how would you get the best out of him then? I think it's, it's just support. I think, you know, in a David Moyes team, it can be a little bit lonely up front. If you give your wide players license, if you have somebody who can play a little bit behind him, be close to him, that helps him. At Frankfurt, he played with three strikers. He was in the middle. Oh, really? And there were two, two proper strikers each side, Revic and Jovic. Wow. And 
to go from that to mm. to David Moyes and West Ham is, is difficult, and mm. I think it's it's been tough for him especially. Yeah. Okay, let's get a prediction from both of you then. A London derby, Stamford Bridge. Um, I'm going to go 2-1 Chelsea. Chelsea win. Rafa? Yeah, I agree. I think it'll be 3-1. 3-1. OK. Robbie, we'll see yours very shortly. In fact, we've taken you around all our featured games now. So now it's time to bring you up to speed with what else is going on up and down the division as we head around the grounds.